Hey everyone, doing uh, another follow-up video on the 95 F-150. Going to attempt to replace the transmission shifter cable today. Going to be a lot of stop and go. I haven't done one of these before, so there's going to be a little bit of trial and error. Um, I'll show you what I'm dealing with currently. Maybe, hopefully you can see what's going on. It's going to be, I got the front camera on, so I'm going to have to angle you some weird ways. Um, basically what I'm dealing with... Uh, You got your regular shifter stock up here. You have the the tube or whatever going down, and then there's a uh, metal plate with two Torx head screws on the back side of the plate that holds it to the shifter stock. And then there's a uh, kind of a ball fitting that clips the we'll call it the plastic part of the shifter cable onto, which then it goes into a brace that locks it into place. And there's a little locking tab that you need to pull that out. And then you have to fish it through. It actually goes through a part of the wiring loom. They have this big plastic uh, loop that goes around it. And then on the floor, kind of in between the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal, um, there's a white plastic clip that it's retained into. Uh, you have to pop that apart. And then uh, there should be like a rubber uh, I don't know, plug or whatever to keep uh, air or you know moisture and stuff out of the cab. And then it goes down, of course, underneath the truck and then uh, hooks onto the tr uh, side of the transmission where it goes to the um, gear selector on the side of the transmission. So let me give you a quick peek at what I'm dealing with and then I'll start the removal process. I'm not going to be able to show you a whole lot as I'm doing it because, like I said, I'm working under a dash. So not, not going to get a whole lot of uh, good shots. So I'll show you what I can show you and if uh, that doesn't work out, well, we'll keep working. But... We'll see what we can do. I just accidentally hit the torch on button in case you're wondering why the screen kind of went white like that. I don't know why they did that. That was kind of weird. All right, so you're going to basically see what I see. Um, all right, you can see the little tooth wheel up there. And that's the basically the back side of the steering. This is the steering shaft right here. And above that, I don't know if you can see where my let's see if we can get you a little better view here. Oh, I can just barely see it. <laughs> let's do this again. There we go. Where my finger is pointing, that's the arm that attaches to the cable. So now if we can jam me up inside here. Okay, you can actually see, okay, right there, the little plastic round piece, that's what I need to take off. And then a little bit farther in, jam me up inside there, that black plastic piece there into that uh, metal bracket, that's the retainer piece. Then the cable basically swings on down into that uh, wiring harness down there. There's this kind of blackish gray uh, loop looking thing. And then it comes down here. Sorry, I'm kind of getting you a little disoriented. And uh, it comes down here to the floor. And basically this here, this here is your uh, shifter cable. And then it runs all the way down. See, I'm peeling the carpet back. And it should be a little rubber access hole there in the floor. And it just goes down underneath the truck. So... <laughs> We'll get started on that, and uh, I'll get back to you after I get the this part unhooked, and then we'll go underneath the truck, and I'll show you what's going on under there. All right, we'll, we will be back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> after a little bit of violence, I uh, was able to free the cable. This uh, little nub here is uh, kind of a bear to get out of there. I actually took a hammer and a pry bar here, and I was able to wedge it underneath there and pound it away. And then uh, the other thing you got to do is get this. It's that little loop that I was telling you about earlier. Um, that's got to come off. Uh, same thing. Jam this in there and twisted it and it finally popped loose. Um, the plastic thing on the firewall here. This guy here. Which, sorry. That guy here. That just clips on there too. So that's not a big deal. Next will be I got to pull it out through the floor. So be back with you again. Okay, back. I uh, had to do some prepping. Had to sweep off my 
concrete pad here. Got a bunch of dirt built up from the winter time and all the mud coming off the truck and car and whatever else. Got my little full mats down here. So crawling underneath the truck here. It's gonna be a little difficult to see. Let's see if we can get you aimed right. One upside down. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of finagling. I got long tube headers on this truck, so. It does make it a little bit, bit difficult. Okay, what well you got, you pointed out right there, it's basically the shifter assembly, then that black plastic round piece is the other end of the shifter. Then up here is the retaining mechanism that holds the, sh holds the shifter into the bracing and basically what's wrong with this one if you can look real close here see how this is exposed that's don't no bueno so that needs to be replaced because of that and it's that's going to be the next uh hurdle for me and i'll get started on it and we'll i'll get back to you when i get it out so stay tuned okay i was able to get the shifter out or shifter cable out and here's what we're dealing with right here. See how this uh, this piece here is uh, not attached anymore? That's our issue. So that's why this whole thing is uh, moving around like this. So the shifter does this and uh, doesn't move the transmission part. So walk over here to our box and we're going to do some comparison. Fingers crossed. Uh, hopefully we've got the right parts. I'll set you down here for a second it out this is a ATP automotive box uh, this came from uh, car quest here's a part number for you guys if you're interested y-788 um, assuming this is the right shifter for it I got the longer one because I have a three inch body lift on my truck we'll do some, some comparison here quick before I attempt to install it just in case it's completely the wrong one so and yes i realize you're staring up at the sky right now but i'm trying to hold it in my hand while i'm doing this so, the joys of working by yourself okay there is a little bit of difference this one is a little bit longer but i think this is what we need for this application because like i said it has a three inch body lift so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, start putting it back in here i'll pause you guys and we'll get back when uh things are back Okay, we are back. Uh, there was a little bit more drama involved than I was expecting. Ended up having to drop the calm down. There is not enough room to fish the new cable in between the wire harness that runs up on the side of the A pillar there. You couldn't get it in there. So I ended up dropping the calm down. It's got four 13 millimeter bolts. You have to pull the bottom uh, cover off of your, like, let's say your fuse panel, whatever you want to call that, lower, lower dash panel. Um, that had to come out and then also need to remember Assuming I didn't break mine, which is highly possible the sh uh, shift indicator um, Also needs to come off first. There's a little uh, pin with a, knot, a nub sticking out on it Unhook it from there and then you can either take out the small little bolt with the white plastic piece You can take that off and then remove it or like I did just unscrew the adjuster all the way And then you'll have to readjust it when you're done Okay, I'm going to attempt to put this back together. I was a little short on breath because there was a lot of twisting and turning. And my hand is hurting because of all the weird contortionist things I was doing trying to get that cable back into its holder. So I'm going to attempt to put this calm back together and uh, we'll go back to you when I start reattaching more things. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, back at it. Okay, I will be lying extremely if I said that was easy. That was kind of a pain. Um, really after I got the calm down, I was finally able to finagle the lock tab was on, I kept wanting to twist to the wrong side, and that was the whole ordeal, why it was so difficult to put back together. Then, okay, once I got it through, I went down to the transmission side of things, uh, it needed some adjustment, you push that little, there's a white locking tab, which I might be able to show you in the old one. 
just a second here. Okay, Let's see if you can see it. See out in the sun a little bit. Okay, this this little it's supposed to be white, but it's really dirty. Anyway, uh, the back side of it, these two tabs, you push it out, and then this this piece adjusts in and out, so you can get the correct length of cable. Um, was able to finally get that to where it needs to be, clipped it onto the transmission, and the cable's the right length. Uh, something I will have to do, um, unfortunately, since I got the longer cable, which apparently I didn't need it, um, I'm going to have to zip tie it away so it's not touching the header tube, because right now it's like that close to the header tube, and I don't really like that. It does have a, uh, like a foil around the cable to keep it from getting hot, but just as an extra precaution, I'm going to try pulling it away. I will say the shifter is buttery smooth now on this thing. I can give you a little demonstration real quick just to show you what's going on. It was never like this before. It was really hard to get it to go in and out of gear. We'll fire it up. Put it this way here. I mean, it never did that before. Before I had to yank it down in the gear. Reverse, neutral, drive, second, and first is a little wonky, but I'm not too worried about it. I don't use first very often, so. All right, I'm satisfied with the result there, so we're just going to leave it at that for now. Next issue, I'm going to have to tackle. Um, I still got that overheating issue, which I mentioned in the last video. Um, this was the big one because, well, I couldn't drive the truck because of the way that it is. Um, gonna have to figure out, uh, got a couple of hits on the, reach out on the Facebook group. Um, Luke from, uh, Luke Thunderhead 289 has a Facebook page. Um, uh, it's kind of like a forum. A lot of people are asking questions and stuff like that. Kind of like the old days. Uh, I was asking a question about this truck, about it overheating. The strange thing with this truck is... When I was driving it, it overheated when I was driving it, but I parked with the truck running, never shut it off, and it sat for, we'll say, five, ten minutes idling, and temperature went back down to normal. Uh, before, it was like all the way on the H, on the gauge here, which hopefully you can see that. Um, went all the way to the H on the gauge there, and it was boiling out of the radiator, out of the cap. Um, radiator hose, none of that popped or anything. The next thing I need to check, I guess, uh, I had a person talk to me on the forum. Two things they kept mentioning, well, three things. Everybody kept saying head gasket, head gasket, head gasket, which, you know. Yeah, easy diagnosis when you're not the one, uh, you know, messing with the truck. Um, you can, you know, needs a new engine, you know. That's, <laughs> hate it when people do that. It's just like they think of the worst case scenario, and that's the only thing they can think of. Um, I'm like, how, how about some real diagnosis, not just throw the whole thing at it kind of deal you know not saying that's not possible because yes it is very possible this engine that's in this truck right now had 166,000 miles on it um and you know anything's possible with that amount of miles yes it could blow a head gasket but the truck never got hot before now so i don't really you know i wouldn't think a head gasket would just randomly go like that um, but I, like I said, anything's possible anyway uh the one of the recommendations of course uh somebody said try a thermostat um, first thing I'm thinking I might try is pull the thermostat out and run it without the thermostat, see if it gets hot going down the highway again. Uh, another, another possibility, and I didn't think about this when I put the engine in it, uh, low radiator hose, and this is, uh, you know, older guy br bringing up ideas from the past. He said, uh, Ford, uh, small box has some issues with, uh, you know, low radiator hose would suck shut because, I don't know, just. The way the, the the way the flow was, it was either too much or not enough, and it would create a almost like a vacuum, and it would pinch it off, and then that would cause it to get hot because it wasn't circulating properly. Uh, the fix for it, and it wasn't just a forward thing. Everybody did it at one point. They put a spring in the in the hose to uh, make it uh, open again, so it basically wouldn't do that. That's something I can uh, check too. I it might have one in there, but it may not. Like I said, everything on this truck is how it was when I bought this truck, other than the engine. The engine's the only thing I put in here. The rest of this radiator hoses, uh, you know, belts, all that stuff was how this truck was when I got it. The only new thing is is shifter, and I actually added a couple of add leaves in there because I had two broken uh, leaves on the back. 
and uh, rather than trying to fight that ridiculousness of trying to put leaf springs in a truck, which if any of you have ever done that, I'm sorry if they are a pain. And if, you know, maybe you live in a warmer climate and you don't get rust and salt and all that stuff, but around here, that is a nightmare of a job to do. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's probably, and I'd rather pull an engine. Uh, and that's not fun on some of the vehicles. This one kind of sucks because it's like, it's kind of like working on a grain truck. Everything's up really high. It's hard to get into. I'm six foot tall and I'm still crawling into the thing. It's, it's rough. I'd rather a regular F-150 four-wheel drive without the body kit or body lift. Um, not terrible to do. Anyway, um, we're going to wrap this video up, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry if this wasn't uh, as in-depth as some of you might have liked. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I, like I said, it's fresh in my mind now. Uh, it wasn't the hardest. Like I said, the hardest part was getting the dang cable to go back to the orientation it needed to go. The rest of it really wasn't too bad. It was pretty straightforward. Of course, dropping the column down, that was an unforeseen uh, step that I didn't think about. Um, I am an actual uh, trained uh, automotive mechanic, so I do this stuff for a living. Um, but unfortunately, I had not done one of these before. I know that's kind of strange. These trucks are getting older. You think I do more of them, but I don't know. There's there's a lot of these trucks around still, and uh, I'm kind of surprised this is honestly the first one of this vintage I've done. I've done some newer ones, but I've never done one of these. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, You know, click on the notification thing. You, know, you can get more videos from me. Uh, thank you, guys. I uh, hope to see you next time. Uh, we'll see you later.